Hey guys, Richie from RW Hobbies, brand new build series and something people have been asking me a lot about for the past couple of years. And we're gonna start work on this guy. Trumpeter's 30 second scale growler. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back. So brand new build and something a lot of people have been asking me about and it's, you see the box over my head. It's obviously Trumpeter's 30 second scale growler. Um, I just love the growler, I don't know why, I just like that that version of the Hornet, um, that's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the project. Uh, it looks a really nice kit, not over complicated at all. Uh, the box is full of parts, but it's a pretty big thing. So I think a lot of big parts. Uh, as we go through the instructions here, later on you'll see there's only 35 steps um, in the whole thing and these steps aren't that filled, filled up with many parts at all. So there's not tons of stuff going on here. This kit is really nice um, in terms of what it has. I, I just love trumpeter kits, the 30 second scale stuff. They just have the, for me, it's just a perfect level of detail. Um, it's not over complicated, tons of tiny parts. Uh, it has, well, I think the Harrier wasn't that detailed, but this one, you know, looks a little bit nicer. The surface detail looks really nice. Um, it's So just, I'm gonna run through a few of the features of this. So we've got metal landing gear, well, metal kind of supports that go inside the gear. You've got a radar, you've got avionics bays, you got a wing fold mechanism, so you have the wings for up or down, and you have fully detailed engines. So, a lot of good stuff in there. Now, a lot of that you're not going to see for me because I want to do it on the deck, but I want to do wings down because I always, last time I did Hornet, I did wings up, so I want to do down this time, but I'm going to do it with the um, nose on, not open, so you're not going to see the radar. If I can, I want to do it so you can maybe pull the radar off or put it back on, maybe magnetize it. Um, sorry, the nose cone on and off, maybe magnetize it, because I just like, I think when you open a nose cone on an aircraft, it just takes the aesthetics away, nice lines and stuff. So I definitely want to kind of close, like I say, if possible, we'll look at maybe magnetizing it, if, so we can just take it off to reveal the radar behind it. The engines, like with, well, like with the Harry, you're not going to see them. They're, um, there's, I'm not, I don't get too much in the weeds with this and start hacking away with a saw or taking panels and stuff off, but you're not going to see the engines at all. So we don't need to go too much work on those. What I will do see is as you go through the build, if we can do it just the nozzles on the back without maybe like no engine, like maybe take one engine out and then have that on display outside of the aircraft, if that's possible. Um, if not, we'll just throw them in without painting, obviously, because you're not going to see it and just throw the um, nozzles on the end. Um, canopy probably down, um, avion space open. And it also comes with like the, the ladder, which the Hornet, you know, the boarding ladder attached to it, um, that kind of stuff. And like I said wings down. I'm gonna do it with the Shadow Hawks. So you got three options here. You got this guy, which is the, the common kind of one you see. Then you got these guys, like the low vis one, and we got the high vis one, which I'm looking at. So it's, it's this guy right here. So you're looking. Kind of black tails, spine, and also the usual ghost grays um, on there. And um, that's what I'm kind of looking at, this one right here. So that's what we're going for. Looking for the box here. You do, do get this little lock bo box of goodness. So let me kind of lift this up so you can kind of see. There you go. That's what we got going on in here. Um, I did a review of this about two years ago. Now the camera setup and stuff wasn't great, so you can probably get an idea of it if you want to go back and look. So the only aftermarket, I want to do it pretty much out of the box. The only aftermarket I'm going to use is um, Quick Boost 32104, which is a correct con control stick. Because apparently the one in the kit is um, wrong size. This is like a couple of bucks. So that one, and then I got a couple of seats, really nice resin seats from Squadron. Um, True details, um, the SJU 17s, put a seat with the seat seatbelts molded in, and just look really nice, good quality um, seats, which make a big difference too. So a couple of resin seats, and, and that's it. I did think about getting the Red Fox 3D printed kind of instrument panels, but when I saw the price, I pretty much fell out of my seat. You're looking at $39 plus $10 shipping. You're looking at 50 bucks just for a few basically switches and stuff for the cockpit. So I'm not gonna pay that kind of money um, and buy another kit for something else for that, 50 bucks. So I'm not gonna spend 50 bucks on that. Um, looking for, looking through the kit, they look okay. They're pretty kind of generic, but with a little bit of 
paints and stuff, but this is gonna look fine. I think this past year I really kind of learned that with aftermarket, unless it makes a big difference, like the outside exterior of the aircraft, it's not really worth doing because you don't see it. It's a lot of work, um, often can go wrong. It's a lot, trying to fit these Aries cockpits and stuff in can be a pain in the ass. And um, once it's on the shelf, you don't see it. So that Harrier I built, it's beautiful, turned out really nicely, really happy with it. I put the Aries cockpit set in, but I never see inside the cockpit. It's on the shelf. I look at it external, it looks great, but you never ever look inside the cockpit. Maybe a couple of times a year or something. So about 50 bucks, I'm not gonna waste my money on that. Um, with the seats, I think it's gonna feel, and, and just working with what we got, I think it's gonna be a lot better and make it easier to build as well. So that's what we got going on in here. Um, I'm gonna put these back in a box. It's kind of nice because you've got these big like packs of box of ice here, these plastic cases. This is the um, design of a size. So you've got the upper fuselage, you got the lower fuselage and I actually this morning I took them out of the box and um, normally you get big parts like this normally hacked away and you got some sanding and stuff to do but they're perfectly molded so I did put them together to fit really well with no sanding or anything required so that's a bonus um, again that, that's going to give you an idea of size so you've got the standard size trumpeter box we got a lot of like kind of um, spaces and stuff in here so it's not quite so full so you've got two halves um, you've got the intakes here some flaps so some harm missiles, put your pods, or your pylons, gear, and all your smaller parts, uh, wings, and it's like more wing parts too. Um, there's, there's more in here, flaps and stuff, um, gear doors, that kind of stuff. So there's not a ton of stuff. Um, remember, these are big parts too. But I think it's going to build up really nice. Um, so one thing I should mention too is, as you guys know, follows my channel, I am not a rear counter at all. Um, as long as it kind of looks like a granular, that's happy with. I'm happy with it. But I know if you are a rear counter, people have complained online that maybe it's missing a few. This is based upon the F, the Foxtrot variant. They take Trump to have taken it, so we're missing a few lumps and bumps and um, antennas and stuff for the growler version. Uh, maybe a little something in the cockpit too. Um, for me, I, I don't care. Um, Steel Beach does do a resin kind of set to kind of correct some of those lumps and bumps. I've looked on eBay for like a year now. This has been in my stash for a few years and um, I've never come across one. They're really hard to find. So I'm not gonna lose any sweat on it. Um, and hopefully you don't either. It's, I think it's gonna make a beautiful model. Again, if I'm missing a couple of lumps and bumps, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. So um, yeah, that's what we got. So we're pretty much out of the box. Those say the seats and the stick and that was it. Um, Pretty much. Now, I picked this up probably three years, two, three years ago now. I think I paid like a hundred bucks, which is kind of standard for a Trump to 30 second scale kit. Well, these are really hard to find now, but if you can find them, they're about 200. Like all the 30 second scale kits are about 200 bucks now. So in the past two years, they almost doubled in price. So if you see any like, um, I have the F14 as well. You might want to pick them up where you can with it cheap. Um, if you get around a hundred dollar range, 120 bucks, that kind of thing. Because um, like I say, with the way shipping costs are and stuff right now, you're looking around 200. So that is it. So that's the project ahead of us. Um, I think I've waffled enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna switch the camera to the overhead camera behind me. Um, we'll look for the instructions a little bit. And I think we're gonna start today with the radar and the nose gear cabin, they call it, but basically nose, nose gear bay um, this week. And then we'll do cockpit later on. Because we always start the cockpit first, so why not switch it up, right? So we'll do that um, and get started here. These videos hopefully will be a little bit shorter. Some of my old previous um, build videos have been 30 plus minutes. I think that's a little bit too long. So I'm trying to keep these around about 15, 20 minutes. So maybe more parts, but like smaller bite-sized chunks, um, more punchy, I think, rather than waffling and, and long-winded stuff. So yeah, cool. So let me switch the camera and we'll be right back. All right, so here are the instructions. Let's do a quick kind of flick through these guys to show you how, well, how kind of simple, well, I say simple in terms of like not tons of parts. So this should go together pretty well, fingers crossed. So go through this. Um, first page is basically all the cockpit and the seats. And then what we're gonna do today is the nose gear cabin, a little bit of metal that goes in there. And I made a note here, add nose wakes, I always forget. Um, I don't know if you need it or not, but just better be safe than sorry. Um, we've got radar that goes in. Fully detailed engines, which you're not going to see, so we probably won't fully detail them. <laughs> Main gear, intakes, 
then you're into your wings and um, it's really, I see I, I mark through so I don't get too confused here, but basically you're either doing folded or you're doing wings out, and I'm gonna do wings out. So you need to know that off the bat because there's a few lots of steps and different parts you're gonna use. So we've got a couple pages on wings, actually more than a couple pages. Um, again, we'll look at this more details as we go along. Um, if then you're putting your cockpit tub into the upper fuselage, adding a base here at the bottom. Nose cone stuff, you can have it open or closed with a radar. Again, as I mentioned, I think we do it magnet magnetize it, but we'll see when we get there. Sandwiching the parts together. Um, and again, we, we know we're going for it as quick, but we're up to step 23 and we're almost pretty much finished the aircraft. Um, 24, you're adding the gear and the um, arrestor hook and some gear doors, um, the avionics bays. I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but you do have avionics bays molded in, so you can have them open. Um, some more parts going on 25. Again, not tons of stuff going on here. What, one, two, three, four, five, less than 10 parts in that step 25. Um, 26, you're doing ladder. You've got the um, refueling probe, canopy up or down. I think I'm going to do down on this one. And you've got your pylons, harm missiles, and your jamming pods and fuel tanks. And that is it. I know I went for it super quick, but that's all 30 second scale kit. So I'm excited about this. It's not going to bog me down. I'm hopefully in the mojo and stuff. It's going to move along this pretty quickly and gets exciting painting weathering phase, which I really enjoy. So first thing we're going to do here is um, we're going to actually go some stick. We're not going to do number one. We always do copy first. So let's do it another week. So we'll start with number two. So I'll work on getting these um, pieces cut out and we're going to do the, um, the nose gear in the bay, which which right here. So. Basically, what we've got three parts, main parts, um, the sides and the base, um, pipe and a couple of little bits go on there. You've got a metal part that goes in between the gear. Um, you do have rubber wheels with this. Actually, I actually don't mind the rubber wheels. I don't mind, my, they look really good on my Harrier, so I'm gonna keep the rubber. I'm not gonna buy um, resin ones. And I'm um, gonna keep this out of the box. And um, yeah, here we go. So let me start cutting plastic, um, getting going on this one. I'll get the pieces cut and we'll come back and we'll get the stuff put together. All right, so let's get going in those gears. So basically these five parts right here. So cut them off and clean them up already. So we've got that guy, side, this side, and a pipe. This guy, I, I which is H35, I've um, already had it gone and had not stuck that on already. Um, make it a little bit easier. Now one thing I will give them a shout out for, which Trumps are awesome with, this whole section two here, everything is on sprue H on this one sprue, which makes it so easy. I hope mini base, I'm not gonna go on a ramp, but I hope you're listening. Um, for the nose gear, I have to go for like 10 different sprues to get the pieces. So it just makes it so much easier, careful planning, just put more on the same sprues, you're not going through all the box over and over again and scratching the plastic. So everything was on this H sprue, which is super awesome. All right, so this should be a simple case here of just kind of throwing the pieces together. We're also gonna paint all this at the very end. Um, we're not gonna paint it before. So this pipe just goes in here like, like that, and it is a little bit warped, this plastic, um, but I'll just put the sides on, it'll straighten it up. So I'm just getting some of my glue, extra thin. And just stick that little guy on right now, and then we just got the two sides, so. Let's see how these line up. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use the thicker cement, the white top cement from Tamiya. Um, first, it's going to hold a little bit better. Alrighty, so there, we got it together. Um, a little bit of persuasion needed, a few little clamps, using my clothes packs here. Um, just to get it in, it's not, it wasn't a great fit. I think the bottom bit was a little bit kind of bent, so just kind of just get it into shape. But glued it together, no problem at all. Um, there is some detail there. Um, I don't care so much about wheel wells because when, when it's down like down on the, on the ground, you're not gonna see inside it. Um, but as always, you can always add like lead wire and um, super detail if you wanted to, but that's the um, done right there. Definitely wanna add those couple of parts before you put the sides on the pipes. Now glue wise, let me just switch back here. Um, remind you what I use. So uh, extra thin, I got the cement. Um, this kind of becomes a white top. I just change, use, use a smaller brush off this one. Um, so this is the stuff that dries really quickly, um, welds it, and it almost dries instantly. So anything more than like an inch, I normally use cement, which is more of a thicker, gloopier kind of glue. 
kind of guns. If you can see it there, um, do love this stuff. Um, use it, using it more and more, almost all the time. To be honest with you, in the smaller parts, I use the extra thin. So a combination of these two um, got this guy together. So using the thicker glue, just to kind of get the pieces in, and then the extra thin just around the edges to weld it together. Um, so yeah, that's that part there done. So that is the nose gear bay. All right. So moving on now to the front nose gear. So. I don't know if you're watching my videos for the first time or if you're new to scale modeling, but if you are, um, if you're not, you can kind of look away, I guess. But if you if you are, let me kind of explain a little bit um, about my build sequence. Things like gear, um, pitot tubes, angle tack sensors, aerials, pylons, all that kind of stuff, I paint and weather separately and add at the very end. Once the aircraft's finished, I then add with super glue attach all these parts at the very end. It just makes it way easier, not gonna break off, easier to paint. The way instructions, instructions always with these builds, always have you put everything on, and it's just, don't follow it. Just, just use your common sense, just build the main kind of bulk of the fuse large and all the tiny little pieces, just do separately at the very end. They're just gonna snap off and break. So, nose gear, obviously we're gonna paint and weather that separately, and at the very end of the build, we can just, kind of just stick it in there, those two attachment points, and glue it in, and we're done. Now, there are some occasions, I think like maybe with the Harrier, where you actually have to integrate into the side. So in that case, you've got a choice of either kind of cutting off the tabs and gluing it at the very end, or just going in um, and just going with it and having to assemble it early on. Um, so that's actually a call to make. But on this kind of build I'm doing today, and, and this one is super easy, just two little tabs that go in there, and that can be added at the very end. All right, cool. So how's it gonna work is, let me move this out of the way so the camera just focuses better. So we've got main, two parts here and we've got like a metal part which is kind of adds some strength rigidity to the inside of it so it kind of goes that way around and this guy just kind of slots in the hole like so and then we're just going to glue this guy on the other side so again my white top glue i'm just going to go around the whole edge sandwich these two halves together. So this should just slot on through the hole, like so, and then just hold it together, a couple of clamps, like so, like that, and just let the glue set off for a couple of minutes. All right, so I've got this together and there were some seam lines, a little bit of gaps and stuff. So I sanded those down using my trusty sanding stick um, right here. I have a pop, this is like a sanding sponge I have as well. These are Flory models. Um, yeah, I spoke about, spoke about them before. I, I've used it for years now. Um, I just feel the quality is not quite as good as it used to be. I don't know why, it's just, um, they seem, maybe it's, I don't know if it's because I'm more rougher with them or I do more modeling, but these sticks used to last forever. Now I feel like every, every, couple of models so I have to replace them. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so there's all different types. ISM or, sorry, U UMP Retail do them. Um, I think Affinity make them. All kinds of sanding sticks, uh, modeling ones. You can also use nail files as well, I guess. But I do like the size of these ones. So, so I sand it down um, with the gaps. I use some of my sprue goo, which is basically extra thin mixed with white plastic card. And it creates like a, um, a white well, you, you depends the more plastic card you put in, the thicker it gets, basically. So you see it creates a gooey kind of um, like melted plastic. I, I find it really good for filling seams and stuff. So ran it for the gaps and then just sand it back and got rid of those seam lines on the main struts here. Cool. So now's um actually I think I'm missing I forgot to do a piece actually. So this piece should go in. Okay, so so I made mistakes, so you guys don't have to hear that from a lot of people on YouTube and um I guess this is the case here too because I should put this in before I um, maybe I don't I think this this should go on before we add the, the two halves together but I might be able to just squeeze it in let me see what I can do here cool so I've managed to Squeeze that in and attach it. We should reach attach it before, I guess. Um, so that part's in. Um, then looking for some smaller parts here. We've got this guy, which is H8. Okay, so you see that? There's a little hole right there. That goes on top of this. 
like that, and that should just slot in place. So, a little bit of glue. Okay, next up some smaller pieces too. We got this guy which is H13 and that attaches to H14. And this guy, H33, is going to sit like that. So I'm just going to glue that guy on here too. Next up we'll do this which is going to be H20. And the other side's going to be H19. Let's see which way it goes. Now this guy H25, the um, the kind of panel that goes on behind it, I'm going to leave that separate separately because that's going to be the color of the fuselage which is going to be light ghost gray. So it's going to be easy to paint that separately and then attach it on afterwards. This guy's dry now, this little one right here, so this one fits on, it's like a, if I move that, see there's like a little gap. like that and that pretty much completes oh doesn't complete the assembly because we've got a clear part so the light is going to be painted the same color as the gear but obviously the lens is going to be clear so what we're going to do is we're going to add this little part which is r5 um, now we're going to add a little bit of masking fluid to the front and then paint it all and then at the very end we pull the masking fluid off or masking tape and um, it's going to leave the clear lens behind it so this gets fitted on this kind of little bit here it sticks out this little kind of Nope, there. So again, a little bit of glue. And I'm just turning it to the bit I cut, which is the kind of gnarly bit. It's facing down, so you don't really see it so much. So that's that lens on like that. And um, that is essentially it built. I'm just kind of straighten up a little bit. So that's it built. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to let that dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and prime and paint it. Okay, so I've got to have them prime the pieces. There it is, black. And good old popsicle stick. Got my pieces on here too. Now, these are great popsicle sticks. There's a hair stuck to it. Um, and then attach them with a bit of white tack. So, white tack is this stuff. Get on Amazon, two packs for like five bucks or something. It's great. Just kind of holding things together like this. Um, also good for masking. You can make little worms and, and mask camo and that kind of stuff. But yeah, a little white tack on a popsicle stick. And um, yeah, holds on really well. So, obviously spray this guy too. Um, as always, use black and I use Mr. Surfacer 1500. Now, what I do is, it, I don't, it kind of gets a little gloopy and, and if you mix it, like, and plus a big pot. So what I like to do is I put it into, um, I get for his LP9 stuff all the time. So the empty jars I keep, and I mix it, I just put 50-50, so I put the Mr. Surfacer 1500 black, then half lacquer thinner. This time around I'm using rapid thinner, so it dries pretty quick. So, rapid thinner. And, um, yeah, I always like to keep thinner to match the paint range. I just think it just works better that way, like Tamiya paint with Tamiya thinner and, and so on. Um, so I use these old jars, mix it up, and what I find is it gets a little crusty around the top after a few weeks. So once I've gone for a couple of jars worth of this, filling, refilling it, I just throw it away and use a different jar um, because it, it gets a little bit gooey around it, this stuff. Um, but yeah, so I missed this 1500 black, um, sprayed it, it dries super quick, and I just loved it, love it. Um, before I did that, you can probably see the light. I did mask it, and I used Mr. Hobby Masking Soul R. They have two types of masking fluid. Um, this Soul R with this color top is the, the better one. 
Now, the brush is really big. See, very gloopy. So what I did is I just used a toothpick and got a little bit, um, it kind of self-levels a little bit and I just dabbed it on the light and just kind of smoothed it out. Um, much more control with this. Did that, let it dry 20, 30 minutes and came back and just added another coat just to make sure on top of that as well. So it's about, um, they say 20 to 30 minutes drying time. So did that then obviously primed it all up and um, that's where we're at right now. So what I'm gonna do is, um, it's getting kind of late tonight and I don't get the airbrush and stuff out again. So tomorrow morning I'll come back and I'll spray this white, all of it's white. So this is the inside of the, that panel, um, the, gear, the wheel parts here. Gear, it's all, all gonna be white. So whatever white you wanna use, um, your favorite white, airbrush it on and what I do is I mist it onto the, the real thick coat so I just find the black really kind of makes the white kind of I don't know it really makes it solid looking and it creates a really nice weathering effect too which we'll see later so I'm gonna have leave these um, they're dry anyway but I'm gonna leave them overnight I'll come back tomorrow hit it with a white and then I'll show you where we're at all right so we've painted it white um, no problem at all also gave it a quick matte clear coat as well um, so painted it up um, one thing, lessons learned, um, peeled off the masking and no problem at all with the lens. Just what I should have done is, I mean, rookie mistake, is for, for, first thing I did before I put primer down, I should have sprayed silver around the back of this light. Because then what it would mean is once it could bend, once that's dry and you spray primer over the top of it, you're going to get a reflection coming through rather than the black primer underneath behind the light. It's not a big deal, you can still see the clear lens and stuff, but in future I should have sprayed silver first, let it dry, then prime over it because um, silver would be the, the first layer you see um, through the lens. But anyway, so did that. Um, the metal struts, I just painted silver and I used um, AK Model Air, sorry, Vallejo Model Air um, Aluminum 71062. I just really love this stuff for hand painting. I wouldn't really necessarily airbrush it. This is airbrush paint. It just works so well with hand painting these metallics. So I've got a few of them. I've got these, I've got steel. Um, I've got the whole range pretty much. Another good color is uh, black, metallic black, because it works really good with guns. If you do armor like the um, the 50 cals and stuff like that, that works really good um, as well. They're good colors. But yeah, really do love this stuff for hand painting. So just hand painted the um, a couple of like metallic bits here and there on here. Um, what else? So as you see, I put the parts into the rubber tires. That was really hard to get these in. The first one, no problem at all, but to get the other side in was really kind of hard pushing in. It's just brute, brute kind of force, pushing them in. Um, and I did damage all the paint work. Um, even though I clear coated it, a lot of the paint came off. So I just came back and touched it up with some white. Now, touch up, hand painting white could be really hard. Um, white just a really hard color. So what I recommend is, um, this is Citadel white. There's different shades of white. This is um, Cremite white, um, Citadel. And um, these are really good for hand painting and they're nice and thick. So when I came back and touched up the wheel here, you can't see it, it really covered it really well. And you can control it. So they do come in typical Citadel pots, but all my Citadel paints I'd actually put into these dropper bottles. Um, just makes it way easier. Um, touch of Flow Improver and a Army Painter ball bearing, which just doesn't corrode. Um, drop that in and you can hear it, it kind of shakes it up. Um, so these are way better, but yeah, anything white hand paint, I highly recommend you have one of these in your collection, um, a Citadel White, just really good to touch up and maybe the old little button here and there in a the cockpit, that kind of stuff. So yeah, so that's that done. So that's really where we're at with this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I just wanna give these guys a little wash. I don't go crazy and really kind of make this too, too gnarly. Um, well, I guess, you know, first of all, we should probably put the wheels onto the, um, onto this guy, right? So let me get my white top cement from Tamiya, the thicker stuff. I'll put that on and the wheels fit perfectly okay cool so the wheels are on and we're just gonna add a real quick wash so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own wash up Got a little metal container here um, you see me use this many times before but Starship Filth um, Aptai Long oil paints these are really good quality oil paints and I really like Starship Filth because um, it's a nice grimy kind of color so don't need much at all, so I'm just going to put a little bit in here and put the lid back on. I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to make this very weak, like I'm using a lot of thinner. Um, one thing to note is, Aptilon, 
the labels are all the same. So this is brush cleaner and this is odorless thinner. So just make sure you use the right one because I almost picked up this and um, mixed it, which would not go down well, the magic potion for brushes. So basically you use um, any kind of enamel thinner. So open this guy up. Again, I, we're just doing a little bit of landing gear here. We don't need tons of oil made up. Um, I'm just gonna mix the oil in. Simple as that, and see how it's like that kind of nice grime kind of color. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a lot to the wheels and just see how it picks up the detail. I'm not sure how well the camera is gonna see that. It's also gonna dry back as well. Just gonna rub it all over. And as you can see, it's a very, um, watery kind of mix, well not watery, but you know, very thin mix um, I made. So it's not gonna, it's gonna dry, just really can live a, some nice subtle kind of dirt. So you don't need to go out and buy all those make washes or AK washes at $6 a pop. Just buy a couple of oil paints. And like I say, with a touch of enamel thinner, it's, that's all it is. It's just a little bit of oil paint with, with this mixed into a jar. Um, so you can save yourself some money for sure. So just picking out little areas on here. And what you could do left over, you could put it in a spare jar. If you have an empty jar, like I'm looking here, I've got this empty bottle right here. I could pour it in here and use it for Renault and do the rest of the gear, I think, so you don't have to waste it. And that is it. That is it. The gear is finished. So I think we're good for today. I know I wasn't going to talk for very long, but this video has gone on kind of longer than I anticipated. So today we did... Um, got that we've got this which we'll add in later um, obviously need to let this guy sit and, and um, let's prop it up against something let this guy sit and dry um, with the enamel thinners enamel and wash I just added um, so the wash is done that's done and also we obviously done this as well um, so we painted the inside which will go on the back of here um, on the gear but obviously this needs to be painted the fuselage color of light goes gray so we don't need to waste the um, you know, cleaning the airbrush and stuff. We'll just spray that when we do the main fuselage. So I put it to the side somewhere safe and um, we'll paint that a little bit later on. But that is it. That is part number one in the books. We covered quite a lot actually. Um, so far, so good. Really enjoying this one. And um, as always, yeah, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. It's totally free to subscribe and you just get notifications when my videos come up, kind of like a Facebook follow kind of thing. Or you can join my channel or join my Patreon for early access videos as well. Um, Greatly appreciated. So thank you again. Again, this is Richie from RW Hobbies. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Friday for part number two. Thanks. Bye.